Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Michael Chavins, RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Keystone Bullet Premier Ultralight 29RK Travel Trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration. On your campsite, your awning. You have plenty of room for that awning to come out. On your off campsite, of course your slide, leave room for that to come in and out unhindered. Preferably nothing hanging over top of it. That way you don't have to clean it off before you close it up. And then I want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. Your water or docking station is gonna be right behind the front on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And then just ahead of that will be your power right in front of your tires. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, after unhook your hitch, first thing you do is level your unit. You have a power tongue jack here with a night docking light. Just retract to take down, extend to raise until you got your unit level. Now if you lose power, under this rubber stopper here is a manual override for this hand crank. So you can get this up and down if you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure those happen with the loose coming down the road. Once our unit's level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. The unit's equipped with power stabilizing jacks right inside your docking station here. Here's your front ones. Now your front are gonna be your bottom here. Oh, excuse me, front is gonna be top. Extend. So as I run these down, I'm gonna mention stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack of those, put them down underneath your feet here and run these down just until they're taut. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. We're already level. That's it. Once you feel the unit wants to start lifting, go ahead and stop as far as you want to run that down. So there's your front ones, your rear ones. I hit extend there so you can see them running down from back here. Run the other ones up, I'll run them down, go back and show you those. Finish running these up. Walk back here and show you where these are located at. Just have someone back here setting down your stabilizing jack pads as you're bringing these down. If you've got your unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Get this big long. 50 amp cord. You take this, put it in at a little angle, wiggle it in there. Once it's in there, twist it to the right, and then turn on your black washer. At the end of this, you have a dog bone that'll bring you from 50 down to 30 amp. And then you also have a 30, 30 down to 110 adapter if you need to plug in at home. Just run appliances accordingly, AC and whatnot. When hooked up to 110 so you don't pop a bunch of breakers. Get your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. Docking station located back here. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this when putting fluid in your unit here. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. 
So over here on your campsite towards the rear is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is making sure our drain plugs back in. Throw a little plumber's tape around that. Put that in there nice and snug. I believe it's an inch and an eighth. Once that's in there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Now you know it's level and stable, so you can go inside and deploy your slide if needed. Uh, but go in there and open up your water taps. Once you get all the air out of the lines, steady flow of water flowing through everything, shut them off. Then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. That's the way to be able to tell that your hot water heater is full. Now let's say you're gonna go camping and you're not gonna use city water. You're not gonna hook up at a campsite. You're gonna go out boondocking. In that case, you're just gonna fill up your fresh water or potable water. In this case, it's right here. Now, no need for a water regulator here. Uh, simply use a hose. Now, the way to tell this is full is have someone inside where you check the levels of your tanks uh, for your battery, your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water tank. Hold that button down, you can tell when it's full. Another way, there is an overflow valve right here. Once that's full, unhook your hose and go ahead and turn on your water pump. Remember, don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water. That's already got pressure. So we got water and power. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit here before taking you indoors. Top, battery disconnect. This will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. Cable and satellite hookups. Your stabilizing jacks. Uh, city water, fresh water. Black tank flush. We'll talk about your tank flush when we dump your black tanks. And of course, a little convenience area here to untwist and run your hoses down through. You have a light here as well. Your big pass-through storage. Huge storage area. Outdoor shower. Here's where we'll dump our black and gray tanks. There's your power again. Your slide. And on this unit, you do have an extra gray tank back here, an extra galley tank. Rear stabilizing jacks. This is a flu for your furnace. If you run your furnace, you're clear of that. It'll get hot and make sure nothing blocks it. Access to the back of your fridge and a vent. Your spare tire with a cover. You also prep for a Furion backup camera. Uh, Device you purchase that sets on the dash of your tow vehicle and electronically communicates with another device attached on here, give you a backup camera for the unit. Coming around to our campsite, open up your outdoor kitchen, you see you have magnets up here. Just analyze that, pull that forward, and you set a grill on here, just lock that there. There's your water lines, hot and cold. Lock that back in for travel. Your electric fridge, there's your controls for that. Here's where you strap this in for travel. Make sure that's back on there before you leave. Again, your hot water heater. Your awning, pitch control. Hypothetically, your picnic table's at that end and it's raining. Pull down on this, that will pitch adjust and send the rainwater this way prep for a tv back out here you can put a mounting bracket on here cables in 110 and solid steps the other side of your pass-through storage i like to put a pegboard in here too also have lighting your propane does have a cover a regulator simply pointing toward the tank you wish to be using lefty loosey to open again check your battery posts and that about covers everything on the outside let's go up inside your unit so the first thing i like to point out in every unit is the location of the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. <coughs> Immediately to your left as you come in the doorway is your control panel. So there's your brand new battery. 
There's your fresh button. I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Your black and two gray tanks. Keep an eye on them. Dump accordingly. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked up to gas. Water heater if hooked up to electric. Make sure you choose the right one. Here's where you turn on your water heat heat uh, water pump if using potable water. Here's your awning. We'll run that back in a minute. Your slide. We'll run that back in. We're done. Here's a porch light. Uh, it's over on this side. And your ceiling light. Oh, there's your porch light. Your awning. Your awning, I'm going to run that the rest of the way out. You just want to run it out until that flat falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that brown bar. It will extend past that. So just keep an eye on it when you're running it out. Go ahead and run that back in for you. Pitch control arms take care of themselves. We'll shut off your awning light. And with your awnings all the way back in here, we'll continue our tour. I'll go right through the living room here. Your recliners are strapped in for travel. Coming into the kitchen here, you have your big country sink, the movable faucet, one touch lighting, pop up USB power tower, we call them. USBs and 110s. Another 110 here, more lighting. Self explanatory microwave. Uh, you do have a light and fan above your cooktop this glass top makes an excellent backsplash use your panel light here turn this to light hit your spark when your gas is on that will light same thing on your oven no need for a pilot light anymore simply turn it to this light light it with this spark and then set it to the desired temperature your Dometic fridge open up your freezer Press this button in to turn it on. If you're plugged in, you'll be on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Oh, there's your auto, there's the button in. And then pull up on that, and that'll go strictly gas. If that light comes on, your gas is low. Continuing into your dining area. Table, you're lighting up here. I'll show you quickly how to turn this sofa into a bed. Now stand in the middle with your best leverage. Simply remove your Velcro cushions. Pull this up. Open up your legs. Fold it down towards you. Put your back cushion down. And just that quickly. You have a bed. Reverse the process to put it all back. Back up first. Hold your legs in, jackknife this down. Turn your cushions. And again, go back to a sofa. Over here to your television. Back up here. Look for your remotes. Okay, I located them. Your remotes up here. Television and sound system. Coming down to your sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, CD player. This will run off your battery. TV runs off 110. Uh, dual zoned. You can shut it off indoors and just have it outdoors. My mom. Down below that's the access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Before I go into the bedroom or bathroom, starting here on the top, is your thermostat, there's your AC, one more button is your furnace, and then shut it off. Down below that on the floor is your 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. 
Now, the reason I mention that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are boondocking and you have nothing plugged in charging your battery, disconnect your bat battery post, your positive, to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone for the day. In your bathroom, the only thing I want to mention in here is two things. One, this is where your uh, 110 with GFCI resets at. And when you travel, make sure you have this snap back on here. The lighting's over here. Back into the bedroom. Assuming your other remote back here on one of these. Back here you have your separate AC that will work up there off 110. Looks like one touch lighting back here. There we go. Turn this other one on. That way you can control that from underneath there. And these are one touch as well. Also room in the back, lots of storage. Access on your here for your storage a shoot going to your storage outside well that about covers everything on the inside let's act like we're leaving the campsite doors and drawers so go through you gotta make sure all doors and drawers are closed on your bed bedroom into bathroom door make sure that this is snapped on there for travel I know them lights are off in both of those so I can close these I like to start by shutting off my ceiling lights then I can look around and see if I've missed any individual lighting that I need to walk through and shut off now that I've done that then I can turn my ceiling light back on and make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Make sure nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in. Your TV's strapped back. Your chairs are strapped back. And we're going to bring our slide in. See the importance of having everything over here closed, except especially them upper doors. Don't want your slide to catch on that. When you arrive, you might also want to look at those doors and make sure those haven't popped open going down the road before you open this slide up. I need to rip them off going the opposite way here. Slides in, we can shut our ceiling light off and exit the unit. Now on these steps, you want to make sure that this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this could catch on your door coming up. You see how close it comes here? Set that in, turn your handle, lock that in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door, lift and turn your handle. At this time, we're gonna bring up all of our stabilizing jacks, unhook our power, our water, and our cable. Bring them back ones back up. I've got them up. We're going to open up this low point drain. Once that low point drain is just about empty, we're going to come over to our hot water heater. And we're going to lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to dump the remaining of the hot water out of your hot water heater. Flip that back down, otherwise your door won't close. Then you can pull this drain. Got our water's drain, let's hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. You're gonna have to start up here. Now you can buy a bigger, longer, stronger sewage hose with a Y on it, so you can have one hooked up back there as well, but you're gonna start dumping up here in the front. So hook that up here, reach up underneath there and pull your black handle. A black handle is going to be your sewage. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, leave that black handle open. 
again with your water pressure regulator come up here and hook up the hose at the dump station to your black tank flush turn it on for a good five minutes what that's going to do is going to wash out all that nastiness out of your black tank go ahead and shut that hose off close up your black handle and pull this gray handle it's going to be cleaner water you should sink in your showers that'll clean your sewage hose out a little bit for you then you're going to go ahead and take that sewage hose probably pull the trailer forward if you don't get a longer hose and then dump this last gray tank back here once that one's done unhook that hose come to your bumper and sanitarily and conveniently store your sewage hose right in your bumper again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this bullet premiere for many years to come happy camping